All right, so yesterday was mostly a bust, at least work-wise. We had to do a ton of shopping. The only real work we got done since then is that the popcorn ceilings have been removed. That was pretty simple. All right, so basically we got nickel and dimed up to about 700 bucks at Menards. We needed a ton of stuff, and they didn't even have everything we needed, so we had to do about a 30-mile trip to Home Depot to grab a couple things for the shower. And something really cool happened. On the way out, I noticed that there was a house about a mile away from our place that was having a yard sale. And this is kind of one of those houses that has a lot of really cool like antiques and it's just kind of a real cool funky house. Well, anyway, they had really cool stuff sitting out. And when we come back, they already had a U-Haul truck there. They were moving and they just put a ton of stuff out by the uh, trash can and they had a really huge DIY uh, farm table. It was like eight feet long. I couldn't fit the whole thing in my van, so I just took the top. And I think what I'm gonna do is chop the uh, tabletop into some shelves that we can use in here. So that was kind of a cool little bonus. So anyway, that's basically all we got done yesterday and uh, you know, mostly just shopping, but today I'm gonna start working again. I think what I'm gonna do is start tearing out this wall so I can bump it up to fit my vanity. And then I also have to uh, probably move this box over too. So I'll start doing that next and see how that goes. So I brought our sink vanity up here. I'm just kind of leaning up against it. And I put it into the corner to see how it fits. And of course our corner is not square, so there's a little bit of a gap here, which I'm okay with, it's fine. But my main concern is I want to measure over here. So from the raw studs over to the edge of this, I want to see what kind of gap we have. So I measure and it's like inch and, or I mean two and three eighths to two and a half, somewhere around there. So my, I'm gonna put some two by threes in here to fill out some space, so that'd be inch and a half. And then my drywall is another half inch. That's going to bring me out to two inches. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap here. So I think when we finally uh, mount this thing, we'll just kind of center it. There'll be enough room to slide it into place. And then once it's all done, we might just end up filling it with a lot of caulk right there. I think that'd be okay. Now I have one more issue at the bottom of this wall i got to show you. It's kind of an eyesore, but it is what it is. And uh, i got to figure out how to take care of that. So I'll show that to you next. All right, so when I bump out those walls, I got my two by threes. That'll be an inch and a half thickness and then my half inch drywall, and that's my two inch bump. My issue is when it comes down here to the slope of our stairwell ceiling, so check this out. All right, so if I bring it down and I transfer that to here, I drew, went ahead and drew a line, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. From this line over, you will see that because the end of my vanity will be right here on this line. So you're gonna see that. So it's a little bit of an eyesore, but it's nothing we can really change, at least nothing I know how to change. But the one cool thing I did notice about it is that when I measured the height, it's shorter than our floor and wall trim is going to be. So I think when I do my floor trim here, I'll just wrap it here and kind of cover it up. And it won't be the absolute best looking thing, but it'll be what, you know, it is what it is. So I'll go ahead and start putting up my 2 by 3s and then the drywall and bumping this wall out and uh, try to get that knocked out real quick. All right, so right now I'm just adding some blocking so they have a place to mount my 2x3s when I put them in. All right, so I cut down my 2x3 and somehow I managed to cut both of them way too short. So I'm going to put a little piece of blocking up there across and then cut these to fit and get them up there. Should be a simple thing, but I have no idea how I screwed it up that bad. Alright, so I added my little piece of blocking and then chopped my 2x3s to fit. Now they're up on there mounted. They look real nice. So now I just got to add my drywall. So I measured it out and I went ahead and drew it out. So I'll take it outside, cut my drywall, and bring it back in, screw it on, and get this thing done. Got my drywall all cut and I'm screwing it up to the uh, wall now. It's looking pretty good. I'll show you how I finished the corner here in just a little bit, but uh, let me finish putting screws in first. So when I added my two by threes on here, I actually made this outside edge flush to my old drywall because I didn't want to have to add in a little tiny strip of drywall and deal with all that. So my plan is to actually just put some of the self-adhesive mesh tape right over that joint. All right, like that. 
Then I'll take some of this metal corner trim, just go right over there. I'll either nail or screw this in place, and then all I have to do is go over all this with joint compound. I should be able to smooth it out. So I'll get these up, and I'll start roughing in something else. I'm not going to mess with joint compound just yet. All right, so my corner trim is on there, looking good. It's ready for mud. So now I'm going to move on to my little wall-mounted light box up here. And I decided to go ahead and measure from wall to wall and find center just to see how much I was going to have to move that box over. But now that I'm looking at it, it's really close. You can see it's only off center by maybe half an inch to three quarter. It's close enough that I think I might be able to work with it. So what I did is I went ahead and opened up our light fixture we're going to put up there. You can see it looks like this has three lights and there's a little center mounted thing here. It's five inches and then there's a bracket that actually mounts to the wall that's four inches. So I put it up here and it's supposed to be mounted in the center, but because it has those slots, I think I can actually shift it to the right that half inch and make it work. So I think I'm going to try that and not have to move that. That'll save me a lot of time, a lot of effort. All right, so what I think I'm going to move on next is just to kind of smooth out the walls. We were picking at the border and the wallpaper that was on there, I peeled it off. You can see how it went down to the uh, drywall and spots and peeled off like that top paper off that's on it. So I need to smooth it out and then I'm going to put some skim coat on there. So I'm going to try out my new sander I picked up from Harbor Freight the other day. Hopefully this thing don't blow out on me. But it's a 7 inch pad so it's a little bit bigger than a normal DeWalt 5 inch sander I use. So hopefully this thing will really tear through it. But uh, I'm going to smooth it out. i got to do that wall as well. It's pretty rough. There's a little section up there that tore out when we took that vent out. And then this wall right here is really rough too. So. I'll just get those kind of smoothed out and then I will skim coat over the whole thing to try to smooth them out. I don't even know if I'll sand the skim coat just yet, but I just want to get it going so I can kind of feel like I accomplished something today. So this thing is not an orbital sander, so it really kicks you around, but it seems to be working pretty well. It's already starting to smooth it out. I have an 80 grip pad on there right now. So. I'll continue going. I gotta go up the wall and everything too. But I think this will actually go pretty quick. Alright, now before I start applying my mud, one of the tricks I learned is that you don't want to use it straight out of the bucket. It's really thick like this, and that's a lot harder to work with. So, what you actually want to do is add some water to it and thin it out. All right, so you want to mix it up so it's nice and smooth and creamy, almost like uh, like a peanut butter that's been melted a little bit. So, oops. <laughs> so I'll mix this up and kind of show you the consistency you want, and I'll show you another little trick you can do with it. All right, now check it out now. It's super smooth, and it just slightly runs, kind of like a, a melted peanut butter or something, so that's going to be a lot easier to work with. So the other trick I have is when you're done for the day because you're probably going to be scooping it out into your little pan your buckets probably going to be open and you know after a few hours it'll start to somewhat dry out so what you can do is just take more water and pour enough in there that it just covers the entire surface and then snap your lid back on there and it'll last a long time and just to show you this bucket that I have right here I have had for probably two years now and I left water on top of it and I got it out earlier today and was mixing it up and you can see that it's totally not dried out at all. So it's a cool little trick to keep it working. So now I'll go ahead and start skim coating and uh, get this thing going. Now on this mesh side of the corner, I'm just gooping it on real thick just to kind of fill in the mesh and the little gap. I'm not worried about if it looks good or not. So just really getting it on there thick and then going over it like this to kind of smooth it out. Because right now it probably kind of curves out a little bit like this. So I just want to goop it up real good. And then you go over it flat like this. And that helps smooth it out and just kind of feather it out into the wall. So right now it's all about just filling it in. And then the second coat is about making it look good. But both coats, or however many coats you do, you want it to look as good as you can and as smooth as you can so you have a lot less sanding to do. Alright, so those corners weren't really a skim coat. I was actually just kind of filling it in to get those going using up my old uh, uh, joint compound. But anyway, now I'll do some, uh, some skim coat. So I'm using a lot wider trowel this time. And I got my mud pretty thin. I'm just going over the whole thing. Just make it look nice and smooth. And 
and uh, keep it pretty thin. And then that way, when it comes time to uh, let it dry and sand, it'd be a lot easier to smooth out. I had to do this in one of our walls when we were redoing the house the first time. It turned out really nice. I was surprised at how well it worked. I guess it's a lot of work, but I really hate putting in drywall, so if I can avoid that and just do some skim coat, I'd rather do this. All right, it's already looking way better. I'm going to have to let it dry and uh, kind of sand it out to get rid of some of these little ripple marks and then it might need the second coat again. But it looked way better than it did just a couple minutes ago. All right, so I finally got all that skim coating done. It's looking pretty good. Got that wall, this one over here, and then also this third wall right here. Now once they're dry tomorrow, I'll do a real quick sand and then they'll probably need a second coat just for a little bit of touch up and then they'll pretty much be ready to go. Now the corner here still looks terrible. That first coat was just to kind of fill it in. I'll lightly sand it tomorrow. And then when I put my second coat on, I'm gonna feather it out a lot farther. So that way it really smooths out and it should look good. And uh, hopefully the walls will be ready for paint after that. All right, so while that skim coat's drying, I uh, started looking over my little vent light here, trying to figure out how to actually install it. And it looks like it's gonna be a lot more work than I can probably get done tonight. So I'm not gonna mess with it. I spent about an hour crawling up into the attic and trying to figure out where it's going to mount and how I'm going to wire it and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to have to shut the power off and all sorts of things like that. So I'd rather do that first thing tomorrow rather than try to deal with it tonight. Another thing I can't quite do right now is that I thought we might be able to save this little faucet mixer thing and just put in a new longer pipe to extend this. But that's not going to happen. I couldn't find any of the um, little handle trim pieces that would actually mount to this one. I think this is probably original to the house, which is like from the early 70s. I don't think this brand is around anymore. So we ended up just going ahead and buying a whole new mixer or a faucet or whatever you call this thing. So I'm going to have to take a torch and undo all of the solder and put a new one in. So that means shutting the water off and all that. So that's not going to happen tonight either. I do have time, however, to add some blocking. So whenever they put this uh, shower surround in, I guess they didn't really need to actually you know, support it back here with anything. So they just built it like this. But now that I'm going to be putting in my cement board, it's going to go across here. But once it gets here, it would be floppy. There's nothing to support it. So what I'm going to do is put some boards in there as blocking to build out so they have something nice to uh, screw the uh, cement boards to. So I'll do that next and that's probably about all the time I'll have tonight. Alright, there's the first piece and then I'm going to build it out from there with the second piece. So this way I can then have something to screw to this way. Now I got good blocking. I'll just put a few more down here and I'll have this done. All right, and there you go. There's the blocks. They uh, sure aren't pretty, but they should do the job. All right, so that's basically all the time I had today. So I'm going to call it quits, but I'll get back to it tomorrow. So thanks for watching me spend another day in the bathroom. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate that. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. That really helps get it out in front of other people that might like to check it out too. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that to keep up with more videos. And if you want to see some other projects I have, I have some here on the screen and down in the description below as well.